Hello my friends, we're um, near the bottom valley of the back of my property and we're going to take a walk over in this area here and um, what I saw, this was about a month, a couple months ago, uh, there was some white, bright white over in there and that's unusual, you don't see white objects in the woods. So. I went over to investigate, and we're going to take a walk over there right now. Um, what I found was the remains of a violent lightning strike that hit a hemlock tree, and it just exploded and blew it apart into shreds. So let's take a look and see uh, the damage that was done. You can see here, as you're going through the woods, uh, the understory is uh, <laughs> pretty barren of green vegetation. Um, and it, where you get the light, it's, it, that's coming in. It, this area right here, there's a slight indentation in the terrain. And the trees that were growing here you can see they're dead and the reason they died is probably because the ground is wet and right now it's this ground here is soggy we're through that spot then there's another one same way right over here And this is where the tree was struck. Now we're going downhill. Now, lightning strikes usually the tallest object. You know, it's a giant uh, static discharge. Uh, look at the wash here. This is an old wash and when you get to the bottom I get to watch where I'm walking there's holes here under undercut so this is evidence of Lots of water. There's wet down in there in that little catch right in there. And evidence of a lot of undercutting. And if you look down here, look at all that greenery. That's swamp like, no trees growing in that area. Some real nice hemlocks here. That's a giant one right there. Here's the one that was struck. And it exploded. Now, I should have come here uh, a month ago when all this new wood was bright white. But look at the distance. Right here where I'm standing. These shards. All these laying on the ground. This is parts of the tree. And heck, that's got to be close to 50 feet away from the trunk of the tree. The tree was large. It was a large hemlock. Uh, you can see that it's already, the leaves are already turned brown. So it's been a few months. Um, and right here where I just crossed. Here is some more and I see bark remains right here Ow. splinter look at these pieces over here these are even further away heck that's got to be 20 feet look at this vertical piece sticking in the ground Heck, that's five foot tall. Pieces here. You 
down in, in the valley in this area here. That's about 100, 100 feet away there. There's a piece of wood sticking in a dead log. In this area covered with fern, I'm sure there's a lot down in there too. It didn't, didn't, didn't blow apart in one direction. All these pieces. Right in there, sticking in the ground, here, this area. There's some bark from the tree. These are massive chunks. Blew apart in every direction. Pieces down in here. Over in there. Okay, hemlock, if you're familiar with it, hemlock is Pennsylvania state tree, so um, it's a kind of a prized tree here. They grow and get pretty massive. You look up here, that's a big tree. Now we're in the bottom of a valley. Lightning does not hit low, usually lower objects. However, um, it, lightning is a static chis discharge and it tries to find its least resistance for the flow, the flow of electricity. Um, and probably all this moisture makes a low current for the electric. Um, if you ever worked with hemlock, I've done many times, put buildings up and you build with green wood. So when you sink the nail and the nail head uh, hits or sinks into the board, when the hammer face hits that wood you get splashed that's how much uh, sap or water is in that wood it's real heavy when it's wet and when it dries it's a light wood um, so this would have been filled with water now this tree was large it's probably over 100 feet but if you look well of course th this all exploded uh, liquid when it changes from liquid to vapor it expands 1600 times so that with a lightning strike it would have vaporized instantly so that would be like an internal explosion that just blew that apart but if you look up the trunk in this area here you see the bark blew off here it goes all the way up and that's from the lightning, the current flow uh, going through that. This, uh, to the native people, this is something that they sought out. Look at this piece here, sticking into the ground. The two right there, pieces up in there, pieces up all the way up into that valley area. Um, these strips of shard wood like this was sawed. If it was a different type of a wood, like a hardwood, these would make uh, excellent pieces for bow making. But hemlock being uh, not a good bow wood, um, it could be used for making uh, spears, atlatls, uh, throwing spears. Um, you get a long straight piece of wood. It doesn't take a lot of work. There, look at that bark. It doesn't take a lot of work to get it down to a, a shaft. 
Yeah, this young tree here, which is still pretty big, it was knocked over by the large one that was struck. I can't even pull that out of the ground. There. That's a lot of lumber. I can see the bark from the hemlock even further than the, these pieces. Look at the distance that it, it blew that stuff. Just amazing. And when it first happened, this wood was bright white. Um, but again, I, that was a couple months ago when I saw it. And you can see we're in a valley. And this is a creek bottom down here. Look at the massive size of those hemlocks. Beautiful forest. This is an old cherry tree and you see it's hollowed out there. It's a pretty good size. That one side is uh, dead, but most likely this was from a lightning strike also. Looks like bear scat there. Looks like fox scat there. Deer scat there. Oh, this may not be squirrel. This is probably turkey scraping. Too large of an area for squirrel to be digging all this up. Squirrels usually just leave a little hole. I see it down in through here too. This is that wet area. Look at this run right here. No grass. Let's see what tracks we see. There's some fresh deer right there. A lot of this is old deer track. Fresh right in there. I'm looking at these trees. I'm looking at this one that looks like a opened hand here. What a neat, neat tree. And then right here, this is uh, mammoth hemlock. A lot of these are hemlocks. This is right next to my cabin. Get a nice view over the valley. This tree is about 50 feet from my cabin. This is a cherry tree. What I'm showing you here is this old wound, this scar. It's vertical. It was all the way up the tree. A scar like that is probably created from a lightning strike. Cherry doesn't have as much moisture in the wood as as the uh, hemlock. The heart of the cherry is a little bit drier. In fact, cherry is one of the few woods that you can burn when it's still green and doesn't give you a lot of creosote. So this is still not, it's a high tree, but it's still in the, near the bottom of the valley. This is a view from the back of my hunting cabin. 
and you can see the view we're probably 30 to 40 feet uh, over the uh, floor of the woods right down here this wet area here is runoff from a small spring that's right over in this area a little bit of cabin decoration here okay this is what I wanted to show you every time my grandkids are here I have to show them these this is the front paw of a bear this is the back paw black bear of course this was taken 10 feet from my kitchen door in my driveway so they're hard to spot in the woods they have real good sense, senses as far as hearing and smell but uh, you usually see them in the open like crossing a road or where they come and visit your bird feeders and empty those out These trees are amazing. <laughs>